Well, I don't know when you're listening to this, but good morning or afternoon. Um, I'm Al Kimball, and uh, this is Trisha Hageman, one of our uh, pianists during Sunday worship, among other times. Kelly is a talented violinist, and Andrew is our technology guru, and uh, they were able to, uh, to go to a conference in Nashville, Tennessee, hosted by Keith and Kristen Getty, and the, the annual conference is titled Sing. And so, Kelly, when and where was that this time? The conference was September 13th to 15th, and it was in Nashville. Okay. So did you guys flew down? Is that what you did? Uh-huh. Uh, Andrew, what would you say was the, the general purpose of the conference? Well, it's, it's really multifaceted because it's a lot of different things all coming together. But really at the heart of what Sing is about is Christians joining together to learn new songs, to sing together corporately, um, to be encouraged and to hear from different speakers. It's not just for worship leaders, it's really for any person that is would like to attend and would like to be encouraged and learn about worship. Okay, so there were pastors there, mm-hmm. almost certain. excuse me, almost certainly, and, and maybe just uh, lay folks who yeah. really enjoy music and worship and Yeah. Okay. So how many how many attendees were there? Can you estimate? There were thousands. Thousands. I'm I'm really not sure, but it was an arena full. Wow. Yeah. Oh, so it was an arena. Okay. Yes. And it was cool too because since last year they had to start live streaming with um, because of COVID. The entire conference was virtual. They mentioned a couple of times that since they were live streaming, the actual full audience, the the online audience was several times larger than what the in-person audience was. And the in-person audience was already a substantial oh, number of people. Okay. Gee, that's pretty encouraging. Yeah, yeah. So um, starting with you, Andrew, can, we, can, can you guys share who your favorite speaker was, what they shared about, maybe in 50 words or less? So for me, it was John Lennox, um, who is a professor of mathematics at Oxford University and is also... Uh, Kristen Getty's uncle, and he shared about the way that technology is going to integrate with humanity looking forward into the future. He talked about artificial intelligence and um, and the way that secular humanists think about technology as a way of humanity kind of phasing out, that we're going to enter into a post-human age. And at the um, core of his message was the idea that um, at some point we're going to push so that homo sapiens become like God. The word he used was homo deus, so man, God. And the culmination of his message was really when he said what the humanists don't realize is that God has already become man, that the thing that they're missing is not that man will be elevated to the position of God, but that God will actually, has has condescended to us and become man. So that was my favorite. So Kelly, how about you? My favorite bit was something that Keith Getty said. He described the International Hymn Writing Collective, a Getty music initiative that stimulates the writing of congregational hymns marked by timeless beauty, deep theology, and stirring singable melodies. He quoted Psalm 96, sing to the Lord a new song. And I was also thrilled by something Pastor Matt said. He said, our generation has something to say in our own language. There are truly great modern hymn writers writing right now in our generation In fact, in our own church, we have Jack Redford, who was a speaker at a recent Sing conference. These modern hymns are just as rich as the old hymns. They contain deep theology and beautiful melodies. We should be broadening our repertoire as a church. Uh, Okay. Good recommendation. Yeah. You get the last word on this question. Well, it's really tough to pick. I mean, there were so many great speakers. I mean, how could you not just love the likes of 
Bodie Bauckham and um, Alistair Begg and Oz Guinness, as was mentioned, Paul Tripp, David Platt, um, and John Piper. Um, I have to say I especially appreciated the encouragement from Alistair Begg. He had a talk that was on the supremacy and the sufficiency of Christ. And he reminded us that the work of Christ was done, completed on a hill far away, not something that was in our own hearts. And so he just encouraged us. Um, he actually quoted Robert Murray McChain, who said, for every look at ourselves, we should take ten looks at Christ. So he just reminded us that we should not water down the gospel. The gospel is all about Jesus. And he really, he just encouraged us that we have the hope. We are in a world of hopelessness right now. And we know the one hope in Christ alone. So that, that just really stuck with me. Yeah. Um, so ladies, what did, you, uh, what did you learn from the conference about why we sing when we worship? Well, Kelly, what do you think? Well, first of all, singing in corporate worship is commanded in multiple places in Scripture. John Piper said, God has given singing to his people as the most powerful expression of our gladness in his glory. He pointed to Acts 16. Paul and Silas sang in the prison and their chains were broken. He told a story of a demon-possessed girl he encountered very early on in his ministry. He read the Bible to her, prayed. There were others praying, reading the Bible. And then every, you know, everything he could think of to do. And then someone in the group started to sing a praise chorus. They sang, hallelujah, hallelujah. And the demon left the girl. Piper said, the gladness of Godward singing sets the captives free in the nations. Trip Lee spoke about the Israelites singing after coming through the Red Sea. He said, we are now always on the other side of the Red Sea. We always have reasons to praise Jesus. Yeah, Mary's song and uh, Zechariah's. Yeah, yeah. Trisha. Well, we need to sing because we're forgetful. We are forgetful people. And words set to music have a longer lasting impact on our brain. I can't remember which speaker spoke of that exactly. But that is certainly true. Um, we need to keep in mind that singing is something that we have, an act that we have been given, that we can give as an offering to the Lord. It's something that we can give back with he alone as the audience when we sing together in church. Piper also said that the gladness of Godward singing sustains the servants of Christ among the nations. And he gave examples. I, I didn't know this part about... Um, Jim Elliott and Nate Saint, before they were martyred, that they actually sang together. Those missionaries sang together, Be Still My Soul. Hmm. And I just think that is um, a precious example of what John Piper was saying about sustaining the um, servants of God. And also, um, we're, we're t meant to sing as an encouragement to others. Bill Gaither was there, and he actually shared that when he was a child, he was partially drawn to Christ by being in church with others and seeing them sing with conviction and with strength. And he said he just looked around and he was like, I want some of that. I want whatever it is that makes them sing. So it's an encouragement to others as well. So, so we'll start with you, Trish. What was, what, was, uh, what was worshiping like for you during the conference? <laughs> My goodness, um, it, it was like heaven. Honestly, I felt like it was almost like a movie trailer to heaven, to what heaven was going to be like. Um, when the music started, I, I think because of the overwhelming number of people singing together, I, I just, at one point, I just started to weep. It was so beautiful. I, I had never been to sing before. But I imagine that this year was even more precious because last year was online only. I did watch it online last year. But this year, being there in person, singing with thousands of people, all I could think of was, this is what heaven is going to be like. And 
Honestly, as a kid, I used to think about heaven and think, what are we going to do for eternity? Like, I can't imagine doing anything for an eternity and not be bored. But I have to say, (laughs) I could never grow weary of what we experienced there. It was really, really special. Just with the musicianship, the um, deep theological truth, singing old hymns and new hymns together, it was just it, it was just beautiful. It's hard to describe, honestly. <laughs> I attempted. <laughs> okay. It was just awesome. It was so invigorating, so exciting and amazing. We were all together, and yet we were all focused upwards on God. It was truly amazing worshiping with so many people at once. The caliber of the musicians, the speakers, everything drew us all closer to God, pointed us to heaven, as Trisha said, and made us want to keep on singing. Andrew. Yeah, it was really transformative for me, um, especially. Uh, I'll echo a lot of what uh, Trisha and Kelly said. I just, I'd never, I had never sang with that many people before. Um, And so it was just amazing to be surrounded by that many other Christians that were all singing these praises so loudly. Um, and the, the band was set at just the right volume so that they were very loud, but they weren't overwhelming. Um, the musicians were all just excellent in their field. And um, it was just so moving to sing with so many other people. And it was especially cool for me because... When I went through college, I I sat through a lot of worship services that felt, that felt emotionally powerful, but that felt doctrinally mushy, is what I would say. Just services that were very self-absorbed, um, as opposed to God-focused, and, um, and just bland overall. And one of the things that made this so transformative for me was that I felt like there was such a richness in terms of what we were actually singing that made it especially, especially powerful for me. I'm glad you guys had a great experience. So back to you, Andrew. Then um, there was a technology side to the conference, and that's why you went, I think, more than anything else. So what are we going to see different in this sanctuary since you came to <laughs> sing? Well, <laughs> it's hard because I, ca- I came back... I came back with this uh, wish list that was just, you know, thousands of dollars of just (laughs) stuff that would be really cool to implement. It it was really cool to see the way that they did use technology well to benefit what we were doing. Um, They, you know, like I said, they were live streaming, and so they had multiple different cameras that they were switching back and forth between. And that was helpful for me to see because of how we have our cameras set up for our live stream and when we use different angles and, and stuff like that. And um, just the whole integration, the sound mixing was great. Um, all of the musicians were also using in-ear monitors, which was really helpful. They talked about um, why they do that in some of the different sessions. And it's so that everyone is completely in sync and everyone can hear where everyone else is and make sure that they're on the right note. Um, And so that really helped the band as we were singing. The entire band was always together. They were always in unity. And that's just a way that using that tech really benefited the worship overall. And one other thing that was actually really encouraging to me, it sounds strange, but there were a lot of mistakes. Um, And that was encouraging to me. You know, there there was feedback issues. There were microphones that weren't turned on when they were supposed to be turned on. Someone would go up to the mic and say, uh, uh, you know, is this on? Um, there were times that the projections turned off unexpectedly or that the projections went to the wrong verse, um, that they cut to a live stream camera that um, wasn't on the right person, stuff like that. Basically, everything that you could imagine that could possibly go wrong. At one point or another, there was an issue. And that was encouraging to me because we have all of that same stuff happen here. And these were professionals. And so it was, it was kind of encouraging in this way of like, okay, we're going to strive towards excellence and we're going to do whatever we can to make sure that our technology and worship 
is integrated well and that we don't have issues when we can prevent them. But issues happen, and the conference just kept on rolling, um, and it worked out. So it was really encouraging and, and it, very interesting to me from a technology perspective. Good. Sounds like we're not quite ready for the post-human age, I suppose. <laughs> So each of you were have come home very enthusiastic. If there was one thing that you or two maybe that you would like to leave with the folks that are watching, what would that be? And we'll start with Trisha and you down the line. I would say this is not just a conference for pastors, for musicians, for worship leaders. This is a conference for worshipers, for everyone. Um, I, I would love to see a huge group go from our church next year. Um, next year's dates are a little bit earlier, September 5th through 7th. Um, I believe it begins on Labor Day. So that may make it easier for some people to attend. It is, again, going to be in Nashville. Um, it was just such an encouragement. I would just love to see a group of us be able to go together. Some of us already purchased our tickets for next year. And um, I do know that there is a cheaper rate that lasts till the end of October. So it's time to decide to go. Uh, so <laughs> I know this sounds completely like a commercial, but I really, I just can't say this enough that I think that by going, your faith, your hope, your resolve will be strengthened. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage everyone to attend. Thanks. Kel? Psalm 33 instructs us to play skillfully in worship. These musicians put so much time into honing their craft on an individual level and then so much time collaborating together, rehearsing together in order to play skillfully to the glory of God. I would love to emulate that commitment to skillful playing in our church by having longer, more frequent rehearsal times together as church musicians. Okay. All right. I would just say, similar to what Trisha said, just if you can go, go. It really is quite amazing. I, I felt like I, my entire perspective on worship was just completely overhauled. Um, if you can attend in person, that's really great. Um, you can attend online as well because they have everything set up so that people can live stream. Um, you really get your money's worth because you... On the one hand, there's the congregational worship, um, which is just amazing, worshiping with such a large group. And there's the speakers that are just so gifted. Um, you know, we've mentioned just what an amazing roster they had of speakers. And there's musical performances from people like David Kim and, uh, and others. We didn't even mention that, but yeah. amazing, amazing performances. So people would go to a conference or to a, an event just to hear one of those one of those things, and this conference ties together all three of those things in a couple of days. Uh, so it's just amazing. Go if you if you possibly can. All right. Well, thank all three of you for your willingness to spend some thank time you. here and let yeah, people so. know what's what happened. Yeah. Thanks so much.